Okay, I'm here to give you my uh, vlog review. A little bit of an apology from last week with no vlog reviews, but I did get the game reviews in. Anyways, uh, this time I had to take my notes on paper because my phone is dead and I don't have to charge you. Uh, this vlog happened on March, no not March. November 5th, 2012. Um, it was confusing. That, like, I didn't understand anything that happened at all. Like, no, okay, I, I'm not, like, I don't, I understood it, but it's just, why did it happen the way things went down tonight? Like, the first thing that happens is it shows... What happened last week with the AJ stuff, the uh, CM Punk stuff, all that stuff. And we get the Miz and Paul Heyman backstage. A little promo by accident. So um, Miz isn't happy that CM Punk left uh, his team behind. So that, um, but Paul Heyman says that he's a champion, he's going to buy his time. This is what champions do. But then Miz says that he quits the team. And then he just leaves. So then that was really it. And then this happened earlier today. Um, so yeah, uh, Miz quit the team. I don't know why. Is Miz doing Because uh, it's just kind of random. Because now they don't have anything to do with Miz. Uh, let me get... And then it's talked about what's going to happen tonight with the whole Brad Maddox thing. The AJ scandal. All that good stuff. Let me get Rey Mysterio, R-Tooth, and Sin Cara versus Antonio Cesaro and the Primetime Players. Kind of a strange way to start the show. Good way to start the show, though. Uh, Mysterio and Sin Cara took out, did their high-flying stuff. Um, Way for, for the 619, Antonio Cesaro encounters into a backbreaker. Primetime Players and Cesaro dominate um, Rey Mysterio a little bit. And um, I guess it says, I should mention that it says that Cesaro and uh, Truth had a feud through Tout. I don't really care about Tout. Um, but then they start stomping away at, uh, their opponents. Uh, eventually Ray gets the hot tag on, uh, Tooth. Well, actually, no. Ray gets a revert, rolling DDT, gets a hot tag on, um, R on Cesaro, gets a hot tag on Truth. Um, Sin Cara goes for the, uh, wait, what happened to, Titus O'Neil, I guess, gets thrown outside the window by Sin Cara. Sin Cara gets a, uh, go Modarian Young goes for the Gut Buster. Sin Cara counters into a, I forget what he counted into, but he countered. Um, then he does the, then he does a Herculana to, uh, Cesaro into, into the ropes. Way does the 619. Truth does the pay dirt for the win. So I guess Truth is going to have a uni future United States Championship match against Antonio Cesaro. Let me get Vicky Guerrero promo. This already happened. Um, well, it didn't already happen, but this is the promo between Vicky Guerrero. Um, she shows the stuff from last week with the John Cena stuff. Then um, what happens is uh, John C Cena ends up coming out, makes some PG comments, um, and he's back to his green colors again. Um, but what ends up happening here is Vicky Guerrero shows him some videos of AJ walking in with a robe. I don't know why they're doing this. And she knocks on John Cena's, well, supposedly it's supposed to be Cena's door. Then someone just opens the door and she walks in. So that could be just anybody. Then um, it shows another footage of John Cena wearing nothing but, I guess, a towel. And he puts a do not disturb sign on the door. And that's her evidence. Like, they could like they could have done a lot more with this. I don't know why they didn't, but they didn't. Um like this was absolute shit, to be honest with you. This was shit. Um, a waste of fucking time. Um what proof does that really prove? Cena even mentions that it's from two camera angles. Um, and it doesn't show any evidence, like I was thinking. But then, a she asked AJ to come 
down to the ring to explain herself. AJ doesn't want to come down there because she's afraid because she's going to beat the hell out of Vicky Guerrero and she doesn't want to get fired because she loves this job. Um, and then Dolph comes up and says that that's not the only thing you love to do, AJ. Cena runs backstage, Vicky laughs, it ends. That was shit. Um, I don't know why they did that. It's just fucking bullshit, though. It's No, it's not bullshit. It's horseshit. Because it just doesn't make any sense. Why are they doing this? Cena can wrestle again, and he's gonna wrestle... Well, actually, I'll, I'll get to that later. Dolph Ziggler... It's just fuck, fuck. Then we get the WrestleMania 29 ad. I think I've told you about that before. Um, they talk about the hurricane stuff, how you can like donate money to save people from the hurricane last week. Then we get Paul Heyman backstage. He's talking to someone about being on their team, trying to convince them. Wade, and he's the person he ends up talking to is Wade Barrett. Um, then he says that uh, Wade ba- that. Wade Barrett reconsiders his decision from last week. Week and joins Punk's team. Um, unless... But he needs, like, a favor for, um... From him. And Heyman agrees to it. And I guess it's gonna be a title shot against Punk. Let me get Daniel Bryan with Kane versus Cody Rhodes with Damian Sandow. This match wasn't long. It wasn't really anything special. All I... Like, Kate, I guess Sandow attacks Kane, and then that pisses him off. Brian slingshots into Sandow. Cody Rhodes does the beautiful disaster off the apron um, to Brian while he's outside the ring. Gets him back, and the ring hits the crossroads for the win. Then he says that one half of the tag team champions won. Now it's Damian Sandow could beat Kane. Sandow's not happy that he made that match. Kane puts him in the ring. He goes to commercial. And then it's Kane with Daniel Bryan versus Damian Sandow with Cody Rhodes. Nothing really happened here. Sandow, I don't think, even got any offense in. Kane just hits the choke slam for the win. Nothing really special to, with Kane and Van and Bryan tonight. Um, let me get Brad Maddox gives his answers of why he just pretty much destroyed, or well, pretty much cost Ryback the WWE Championship. And he said that it was all him. Nobody else. He said that he was sick and tired playing tryout matches on Raw and SmackDown, um, being denied, people saying that he's just because he's 6 foot, 200 something pounds, and he's been, he was put in the vet of metal, and he never got his shot, then he finally got a shot, and it's a referee, referees didn't think he can do it, and then he says that he wants a match with Ryback, are you fucking serious? This guy can't even cut a promo, to be honest with you. He ta- He's nervous when he cuts a promo. He was nervous. And he's going to have a match with fucking Ryback. He's going to get fucking squashed. Because Vince McMahon comes out and says that he'll give him a million dollar contract if he beats Ryback next week. There is no way he's going to beat Ryback. There's just no fucking way. Then he... Says, speaking of contracts, and I thought he was going to bring out like a new debut in Superstar, but that ain't fucking happen. He brings out Vicky Guerrero. Then he says, does that sound good? Yep. Um, then he says, Punk deserves a title shot. Well, I guess he changes the traditional Survivor Series match. Now it's Punk, and, and now Punk's in a championship match. Um, Vicky Guerrero says it should be Dolph, but he says, nope. Uh, not Dolph, Ryback. Then she he asked that there's somebody else that deserves a shot. Then he said, then she said, and he says, if you say Dolph, you're fired. So then she ends up saying Cena. Um, so then it's a triple threat match: Punk versus Ryback versus Cena for the title. Why? You had this like, you had a build up match. You had Punk, Cena, and Ryback. They were built up. No way. Punk's team and Foley's team. The whole reason Foley's gonna even made this team is because Punk, Punk challenged him. Now he's gonna face it. Now he's gotta um, have a brand new team captain. That's shit. That is shit. I don't care for that. I don't care for that. That doesn't make any sense. Now they have to find someone else because Ryback's being replaced. This is just fucking bullshit. 
Okay. Um, then they have to find someone for Punk, which they do find someone for Punk. But it's just like the whole reason that they, this match was made was because of Punk and Foley's feud. There's not really a credible feud. Maybe brought the Team Hell No and Team World Scholars. Kofi, but now Miz is gone. Um, and Randy Orton and Del Rio. That feud's a piece of shit. Um, but yeah, so I'm not really interested in that. Um, hopefully they'll blow my mind and see who's going to be the final member. And they, all, and they only have a week, so maybe you better get somebody good. Then we get a Super Smackdown Live advertisement. Reason, um, it says that it's gonna this for the first time ever it's gonna be Randy Orton versus Dolph Ziggler in a false count anywhere match in England. And I guess that's gonna be a okay match, but I don't really care because the feud's shit. Um, but it could be a de decent match. I don't know about the show though, because normally when they do Super SmackDown. They do funny segments like uh, the like when they did that tail on stuff when he was having like a barbecue. Eve got spilled. Eve got punch spilled on her. Kane had to do this with the uh, fire. It's just usually like a big baby face party. That's exactly what that's gonna be tomorrow. Um, please surprise me. Like I remember, I think we had one Orton versus Otunga. And they had like a Christmas f street fight. And then Mick Foley had to be PG. The, he had to dance with the Usos. Once Walker could talk. No. Fuck that. Don't do that. Make this a good show. Because no one watches Smackdown. One. And if you want to get people to watch this shit. Or well Smackdown. You got to make it interesting. Because Smackdown I didn't want to watch. Because of WWE 13. And I... Watch Suicide Dive Wrestling's, which you should subscribe to him, by the way. He's a pretty good subscribe what, what he does. Um, but he, at least, like, he's the re he gave me feedback. And he said, and um, when he, when I didn't watch SmackDown, I was fucking glad I didn't watch SmackDown. Because it was a piece of shit. I was actually having more fun playing WW13, which I could have been doing after this war. Doing this wall because I would have rather played that than watch Raw tonight. Yeah, so fuck that. Um, let's get on with the next thing. So yeah, then we get Sheamus versus The Miz with Big Show on commentary. This was the match of the night, definitely. Um, it was a pretty good match. This was probably the yeah. This was the match of the night actually. No, yeah. Um, when ends up with uh, Miz. Gives him the DDT, um, puts gives him that clothesline in the corner, goes off the top rope. Sheamus, the, actually Sheamus didn't actually do his um, clubs in this match. But the reason why, this isn't really that much of a step up saying this is match of the night. Because the whole time, Big Show and, um, what's his name, uh, Michael Cole are arguing with each other. Big Show is intimidating Michael Cole about his right fist. No. Um, but Jim Ross did try to talk about the match because Sheamus did the Rolling Thunder. Um, Sheamus got put into the steel post. He got that little knee breaker and that neck breaker by the Miz. Sheamus did that flying, uh, battering ram off the, uh, roll, top, turnbuckle. Um, hit the, hit, hit the Celtic cross and the blow kick. And then he, then he hits the blow kick for the win. Then Big Show holds up the World Championship. And I guess they're having a match at Survivor Series, which should be a fine match. Uh, I was fine with the Sheamus winning, though. Uh, gotta, get, gotta get him some momentum. So that was a good match. Then we get WWE 13 ad. It just shows that ad with CM Punk saying, This is the revolution. So if you haven't seen that yet, just go check it out. Then we get the Max Maximum Conviction ad. The reason why I put this, this is a movie. The reason why I put this down is because Stone Cold's in it. I wanted to mention that that Stone Cold, that's what Stone Cold's been doing lately. He's been making that movie. Um, hopefully, Stone Cold will be coming back to make an appearance in WWE. He hasn't made one yet this year. I want to see him make a little bit of an appearance. Maybe next week. Probably not, though. Um, let me get Dolph Ziggler backstage. 
Figueroa just came out of Vince McMahon's office. Um, then uh, she says that Dolph Ziggler is now the captain of Punk's team. Punk's not happy about that. So then um, he uh, they they all start arguing. Vicky says that it's gonna be Punk and Ziggler versus um, Cena and Ryback tonight. Then they're both pretty upset about that, and that was really it. That was just nothing really special right there. Then we get the Brock Lesnar DVD um, advertisement. Then we get Sheamus and William Regal backstage. Um, I'm glad they had William Regal on the show, but I wish he had a match. Because if it's his... Oh, wait. He's from England. He's not from here. Yeah, he's from... Yeah, because the night Raw was in England. And you had Wade Barrett on the show, but you, you had William Wingo on the show, but couldn't he at least have had a match? Um, William Wingo, I think, is a great wrestler, and I don't think he's going to hold a world championship. It's a shame, because he's a pretty good wrestler, and he, he probably could stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Wade Barrett, Jinder Mahal. I don't know about Heath Slater, but he could probably help like these young guys get where they want to be. He could probably hold a good match, maybe, with even Yoshitatsu. Um, could Hawkins, if he's still around. Um, one of the Uso brothers. Um, Drew McIntyre, throw them in a match together. But nope, you gotta have Willie Regal talk backstage. They talk about Sheamus, just, they pretty much just talk about stuff that friends would talk about. But they, I think they just wanted to get William Regal on the show. But you could have done it a different way than you did tonight. I mean, it shows the AJ scandal part two with the John Cena thing. I forgot to mention that uh, John Cena mentions Edge and Dolph Ziggler as the uh, husbands, well, boyfriends anyways, and how she got them to world championships. So I thought that was pretty cool. Then we get Eve Torres and Oksana versus Caitlyn and Layla. This is the this is part of the show I didn't really care about because it was all just thrown together. Um, who won this match? Oh, uh, Caitlyn... Pinned Eve. I forget how, though. Then we get Alberto Del Rio backstage. Guess he accidentally runs into Rosa Mendes. She says, excuse me. And then he's like, no problem. So I guess they're flirting with each other. I don't know. Then we get the uh, WWE app advertisement. I have it. I just have don't have my phone right now. Then we got Kofi Kingston versus Alberto Del Rio. Decent match. Um, Kofi did the... Um, SOS, Del Rio did the cross arm breaker, um, over the ropes. Then it ends up, uh, Kofi goes for the high cross body. Del Rio misses it, goes for the cross arm breaker. Um, Randy Orton's music hits. Then it kind of stops. Kofi rolls up, um, Del Rio for the win. Orton sneaks up from behind with an RKO. So, another stuff, more stuff that they are doing with this field that I don't care about. Then it shows uh, the Brad Maddox promo again. Then it's Team Cobra versus Primo and Epico with Rosa Mendez doing this. But before I should, like when it goes to commercial, um, they show the WrestleMania 29 ad. And, and it tells you how to contribute to the hurricane last week. I guess you can go on like a certain website. I don't forget the website, but it, you can like donate $10. And then, uh, well, if you text it, I don't know what you do if you go on the website. I don't think... Like, I know I want, would love to donate $10, but my dad pays for my phone. Um, so I don't think he's going to be happy if I did that. And he, it just takes $10 away from you. I don't really... Not that I don't want to, it's just my dad wouldn't be happy about it. But uh, let's get back to the match. So we have Team Cobo versus Primo and Epico with Rosa Mendez. No. This was filler. This was just a match thrown on there the last second. Team Cobra wins because Co Santino hits the Cobra um, on Epic Go. I forget which one it is. Cause, but at least they're getting the tag teams on the show, I guess. I um, I forgot pre about Primo and Epic Go. Actually, no, I didn't. I, I sort of forgot about them. Um, but yeah, um, start using them better. Primo and Epic Go are a good tag team. Co team Cobra, I guess it's a decent tag team. At least it's a tag team. So... Get your tag team, at least you get your tag team division up. And then we get, uh, the encyclopedia ad. I hope I get this for Christmas. It's just that, if I, I think I showed it to you, the encyclopedia I have now, but it's in a, it's like better now. 
Then we get that magazine conviction ad with that, the movie that Stone Cold's in, in again. Then we get Brodus Clay versus Wade Barrett. Brodus Clay, uh, all I have to say about that is um, Brodus Clay's losing streak continues. Happy about that. Wade Barrett gave him the souvenir elbow for the win. Thank you. Brodus Clay's losing streak continues. Then they get the Super Smackdown ad again and announce that Jerry the Kim Lawler will be back next week. I'm fine with that, but I'm going to miss Jim Ross being on commentary. What I think he should do is if put Michael Cole on SmackDown with JBL and put Jim Ross and Jerry the Kim Lawler together on Raw. Then you should have a solid commentary. Um, then we get Heath Slater with Jinder Mahal versus Jey Uso with Jimmy Uso. I didn't care for, like, for the rest of the show, I didn't really care for what happens is uh, Heath Slater hits a DDT, jumping DDT like Edge used to do on Jay for the win. Then we get the WWE 13 plug. They talk about Punk, how Punk made the cover. They talk about matches, the Attitude Era mode, which I've been doing. They talk about um, how you can do matches like Austin versus Punk, Rock versus um, Sheamus, and Ryback versus Undertaker. Then we get the K-Mod ad with Sheamus talking to the fan. Then we get CM Punk and Dolph Ziggler with Paul Heyman versus John Cena and Ryback. Um, when it goes to commercial, it shows that WWE 13 ad, ad again with Punk saying, this is the revolution. But Punk cuts a promo saying that um, he has held the WWE Championship for 351 days. And it's not fair that he has to face... Ryback and Cena again, um, and he says that he's not only survived, but I thrived in this title man, title picture with this title. Um, then he says that uh, he's going to beat walk out of Survivor Series with the WWE Championship, making it 364 days. I don't know about that, because it looks like he, his chances don't look good at all. The only way I could see him winning is... Um, I don't know. Because I would say he hits the... Cena hits the FU on Ryback. Then, uh... Ziggler pulls Cena outside the win. Zigzags him into the steps. Punk runs in the win. And pins Ryback for the win. But I just don't see that happening. Because Ryback's overpowered. I like Ryback and all. But it's just... When someone's overpowered and can absorb anything... You don't know what could happen. So I don't know. Um, I'll think about it though. I'm gonna think. Of, um, I'll I'll think it through. I still have a week to make my prediction. But, but let me get the match. Um, it was a decent tag match. Not really anything special. Um, I liked how they had Cena kind of in the match the whole time. This was Cena's first match back due to injury. He hit the FU, did some elbows. Um, Ziggler went, but then Ziggler went for a, a drop kick. Cena moved out of the way. Cena got the hot tag on Ryback. Ryback just hits his moves and hits the show shock on Punk for the win. Then Cena and Ryback have a stare down to end the show. So kind of an average show. Like, I, I actually, not, I kind of above a below average show. I enjoyed some of it. But, like, I the only th uh, the things I did like was... Del Sheamus versus Miz and Del Rio versus Kofi. I thought that was okay. Other than that, I think this whole show was a waste of time. So pretty much the whole show was crap. Filler stuff, really. Um, next week, you go home so for Survivor Series, guys. So uh, I hope you guys do something special. And you still need to know who's going to be on Team Foley. And I think it should just be Mick Foley. If he's just going to be there, I don't want him to just be in his corner. What would be the point of having it be Team Foley? fact, what's the point of having it at all? Because CM Punk is in a feud with was in a feud with them, and now Mick Foley can't even compete. So good book in WWE. Have The Rock maybe come out, but no, because Punk's not on the team anymore. Maybe Lesnar can betray. No, Punk's not on the team anymore. Fuck that. Like, Survivor Series I thought could have been good because of this traditional Survivor Series match. But look at this. You got Team Ziggler. They actually have a so solid team. They have Ziggler, Damian Sant, World Sc Team World Scholars, a butter and a but a butter and Wade Barrett. That's a solid team right there. Then you got a mystery opponent, um, Kofi Kingston, Team Hell No, and Randy Orton. 
with Mick Foley. Mick, Randy Orton doesn't even like Mick Foley, okay? They have a history that is awesome. Team Hell No don't like each other at all. Kofi Kingston doesn't fit. You have a mystery opponent. No, I mean, partner. This is fucking shit. I would rather, like, is this even worth getting? Like, I'm gonna watch, like, if it's not worth the money, I'm just gonna watch it on the laptop. I'll still watch it, but I'll just watch it on the laptop. Then you got this triple threat match where you don't know what's gonna happen because it looks like Punk isn't gonna win. Then you got this, uh, well, actually, the, the, the world title match, I think, is the match I'm looking forward to the most. Like, this, this is just shit. WWE, last week, screwed up everything when they took Punk out, out of the and traditional Survivor Series match. Because they realized that they would, would they, that they didn't know what they could do with the rest of the night. Now, look what you did. <sighs> no. I'm not done. I'm done. I'm just done. I'm not done with WWE, but I'm just done with the way they're booking things. They should book things differently like they used to in the Attitude Era. I'm not saying have things have blood all the time. But when T Undertaker and Kane versus what was supposed to be... Un like, if you've seen those videos, I mocked out. That was they, they did genius stuff. They don't do shit now. Like, the, the writers must not get paid a lot of money. Vince McMahon had to bring out Vicky Guerrero just to make an announcement for this triple threat match. And... Then he just take. Then he just made this whole traditional Survivor Series tag match with Mick Foley pointless. Shut the fuck up. Fuck this. Um, I used to hate Break the Walls Ten for shitting on everything WWE used to do, but that was when the good things happened, like when Triple H became champ COO, which Mr. McMahon shouldn't even be chairman right now. Um, let's I was uh, when Cody Rhodes was. Put in the Intercontinental Championship into prestige when uh, Zack Ryder was actually getting a push for the United States Championship. Uh, when CM Punk and WWE were having an epic, why not, an okay feud for the WWE Championship. Punk was cutting great promos. I missed that stuff from last year. 2010, meh. Um, 2009, meh. 2008, meh. Uh, uh, Taker and Edge feud was good. Uh, I'm gonna say that championship travel match was good stuff. 2007, Taker and, that Taker and Batista feud was good. Orton and Sean feud was good. Um, Cena and Sean was good. 2007 had a pretty decent year. Uh, that's kind of when I started watching it. So I'm not really gonna judge 2006 because I didn't watch it then. But I'm just gonna click off now because I'm just rambling and rambling. That's pretty much it, guys. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't. Um, like the videos, add them to your favorites, comment on the videos. You can also add me as a friend on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, and you can also like Wrestling Fortune 44 on Facebook when I invite you. But first, you gotta add me as a friend on Facebook. Then, you can actually go ahead and subscribe to CM Brothers, um, and then you can like those videos, add them to your favorites, comment on the videos. And then you can go ahead and add Adam as a friend on Facebook and like CM Brothers on Facebook. You can do the same thing if you add me as a friend on Facebook too. Um, then you can, um, let me think, there's one more. Oh, subscribe to Own the Talkinator. Then you can uh, add those videos to your favorites, like the videos, comment on the videos, so, um, add them to your favorites. And then you can like that on Facebook. That's pretty much it, guys. Peace the fuck out.